Baby Naomi, a sweet bundle of joy. Her parents, Brenda and Josh, treasure their little princess. The couple waited a long time to have a baby and were thrilled when Brenda became pregnant. Naomi was a very wanted child. We waited a long time to have children. I attended daddy boot camp classes at, at St. Joe's before she even came into the world because I wanted to be the best dad I could be. Brenda had a difficult labor. The mom-to-be had a C-section, enduring vacuum suctioning during birth. Watching my wife go through what she went through to, uh, to bring our daughter into the world, I, I just, it gave me a tremendous, uh, a, a new love for my wife. Our Detroit affiliate WXYZ following the story. Two months after Naomi's birth, a dark turn of events for that happy family. Josh, an airline pilot, says Naomi slipped off his knee one day. He caught her by the face to keep her from hitting the coffee table. Both Josh and Brenda say it was an accident. She was smiling and giggling and um, we went about our normal day. The day after the incident, Naomi started vomiting. Brenda and Josh rushed their daughter to the hospital. I told the attending physician there about it, and he scoffed at it and said, Dad, this is nothing you did. Your, your daughter is suffering from a, an infection or virus. But a doctor at the University of Michigan finds something disturbing, an MRI revealing a subdural hematoma that's bleeding between Naomi's brain and skull. And that's not all. The scan showing retinal hemorrhaging. WXYZ reports the doctor accused Josh and Brenda of abusing their infant daughter. Devastating, humiliating, terrifying. The University of Michigan Health System issued this statement. The physicians and other health care providers on our child protection team are highly trained in caring for children who may be victims of child abuse or any other conditions that may jeopardize a child's health and well-being. Our goal is simple, to keep children safe and healthy. And then more trouble. Court documents reveal child protective service workers accuse both parents of child abuse and they put Naomi in foster care. The case goes to court. Brenda was cleared. Josh was charged with second degree child abuse. A shocking outcome, since not only did Josh say he passed a polygraph test, medical experts testified that the bleeding inside Naomi's head was caused by trauma during her delivery. A jury convicted Josh of felony child abuse. He's a danger and he is not admitting what he did. He's still maintaining full innocence. Brenda was granted custody of Naomi and fled the state, hiding out in Colorado with her daughter. So how could what the Burns family maintains was a simple accident result in tearing a family apart? The Burns family falling down a legal rabbit hole. It could happen to anyone. Here, Joshua here. No. No. Take a look at this nanny cam, set up at the couple's home, recorded the night of Josh's conviction in the corner of the screen. A worker from Child Protective Services, along with police, show up at the house. They were looking for Josh, suspecting him of sneaking in to spend time with Naomi, violating a court order that blocks him from seeing his own daughter. I'm with uh, CPS, I'm with okay. DHS. I was okay. having to come out and just verify that he's not okay. here. You can check the house if you, so anybody you want choose. To Defense attorney Elizabeth Warner says with no warrant, CPS and the police had no right to invade the Burns' home. Brighton City police officers and a DHS employee committed a home invasion of the child's home. The child was there with their grandparent. Warner wasn't going down without a fight. She fired off this letter to CPS, telling them that Brenda was moving and they could reach her at a post office box. But CPS fired back, following up with a court petition against Brenda, demanding that she give them Brenda's new address. People in Livingston County have not acted either honorably or legally. It, it frankly is the stupidest, most stupid, silly petition I've ever seen filed. It doesn't accuse her of any child neglect. It doesn't accuse her of any child abuse. It accuses her of moving and having an attorney. It's pure hypocrisy and legal terrorism. 
and it gets worse. Brenda's attorney discovered that CPS put her client on a secret list of child abusers called the Central Registry, preventing her from continuing her work as a registered nurse. So they're trying to destroy her emotionally, financially, legally, any way they can. Here's a letter from CPS telling Brenda she's on that secret child abuser list, accusing her of causing severe physical injury, shaken baby syndrome, and physical abuse. That notice was dated April 23rd, 2014. But that CPS worker signed the document in January of 2015. That's a full nine months later. The law requires CPS to notify you no more than 30 days from your investigation. They put her on the registry when there's a 2014 law that says they can't do that. Outside court, Josh Burns supporters gathered to protest his second degree child abuse conviction. Meanwhile, the judge gave Josh a break, sentencing him to only one year in county jail instead of doing hard time in prison. But I do find that he has the potential for rehabilitation. Did you abuse your daughter? Never. I would never hurt my daughter. She was a well-planned baby, a wanted baby. My wife and I uh, cherish her. Um, I would lay down my life for my wife and daughter. The judge's reasoning for giving Josh a more lenient sentence, the overwhelming community support for Burns, and his perfect 15-year record as a pilot. It's, it's hard to describe um, the feelings of going into prison an innocent man but the blood of my innocence is on their hands, and I will walk in holding my head high. With her husband facing jail time, Brenda says she's lost all faith in the judicial system. I am in fear. I, I have nightmares at night. But for Josh and Brenda, a light at the end of the tunnel, the couple who had endured so much pain appeared before the judge four months after Josh had been sentenced. In this hearing, she decided not to end Josh's parental rights for his daughter, Naomi. The court cannot overlook the efforts that respondent father has engaged in to date uh, prior to his incarceration. Um, he has exhibited more effort and commitment to parenting Naomi than many parents exhibit uh, to this court in years of services. I think just to hear the judge speak positively about our family is um, amazing. I, I, her belief that Josh is, is, you know, that Naomi would benefit from being with her dad is amazing. And then in what seemed like an eternity, a moment so many have been waiting for, husband and wife reunited after Josh served an almost nine month term in the county jail. It's been the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. Naomi is now two years old. Josh has lost a year and a half of seeing his daughter grow and he plans to make up for every minute of that lost time. Today, I'm just um, overwhelmed with thankfulness that I get to see my daughter and uh, hold her for the first time in 613 days. Certainly is one of the more polarizing and complicated cases I've come across. Even the medical experts conflicted. It's difficult to arrive at a firm opinion either way. Now, even though Josh Burns has finished serving his time, he is now appealing his conviction and with the support of the University of Michigan Innocence Clinic, hoping eventually, of course, to clear his record of any wrongdoing. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you think Burns should have been found guilty of second degree child abuse? You can sound off right now at our website, crimewatchdaily.com.